Hi everyone, welcome to a different episode of Cheltenham Chart. In this episode, I'll quickly look at the anti-post markets for 2025 and mix that in with what I saw last week at Cheltenham. Before I start on this episode, I want to say that I'm really pleased to see that uh, the video that I did talk about a lot over the season from Smoking Cheltenham um, did very, very well this season at the Cheltenham Festival. Puts up quite a few more bets than me and um, absolutely smashed it this season. Uh, some really nice priced winners and uh, I totally recommend that you follow Steve on his journey to Cheltenham 2025 where he's already got some good bets put up. Now I'm going to talk about my thoughts for 2025. It is like throwing a few Hail Marys and hoping. Um, like I said, from quite a few years now, it's very difficult anti-post betting. And unless you're doing a few in each race, it's it's really difficult, I think. But I will give you my thoughts. Um, you, you can take them on board if you want. Um, but I've only played a couple of these. I'll tell you any of the ones that I've actually backed and the, the rest are just thoughts going into next season. In the novice hurdles this season, none of the winners ran at Cheltenham um, in the previous season. So Slade Steel, Bally Bar, Non-Stellar Story missed the festival in their bumper year. So that's just something to think about. Now, three horses that I'm going to talk about for novice hurdles. Um, only one of them went to the festival. That's Romeo Coolio of Gordon Elliott, who I do think will progress into a very good horse next season. Whether he'll win one of the novice hurdles, I don't know. I think he'll probably be a better chaser, but I was really impressed with how he ran in the champion bumper. I thought he was very unlucky to lose, being marooned out in the middle of the track and where he came from. I just thought he ran a hell of a race in the champion bumper, and so he's a novice hurdler that I would feel should be followed next season. The second one... Um, is one that I backed for the champion bumper and um, was avoided because he became injured. Now, hopefully that injury is just a small injury and uh, I would follow Jeroboam Marchand. Who knows where he'll go with a trainer like Emmett Mallins. He could be trained for anything. Um, the one thing is he is a master trainer though and um, trained really well. Corbett's Cross this year, so you could end up seeing Jeroboam Marchand and the Albert Bartlett or um, the Gallagher's. Who knows where he'll end up? He could go chasing with a trainer like Emmett Mallins. You just don't know, so I think he is one to follow wherever he goes next season. The final one is William Manny. I wouldn't know where he would go either, but I was really impressed with both his bumper wins now. Set a chance didn't exactly enhance the form in the champion bumper of his first victory, but his second victory was also extremely impressive. I would imagine he'll put it up to all of the ones in the champion bumper when they ran at Ch uh, at Punchestown later in the season. So he's just one that I would actually look at as well. So the three novice hurdlers that I would be looking at next season are Romeo Coolio, William Manny, and Jeroboam Marchand. For the Arkle. It's really difficult, isn't it? You don't know if Bally Burns going chasing yet, so Slade still be very solid for the arc, I would think, after his win the Supreme. He really stayed on well to get back up and um Henry de Bromme does well with two mile chasers, so you'd think he'd you know carry a big chance into that race. Of course in the pocket is still a novice as well next season, so he could well be still going for an arc. You've got horses like Jericho, De Repine, Mystical Power, etc. The one at a bigger price that I'd look at is Ill Atlantique at 25 to 1. I just felt, I, I don't know what happened to him in the, the Gallagher's. I thought he was absolutely hacking coming over to second last, and he, he didn't even finish second. And I'm just wondering if that Lawler's and Ace took out a lot of horses. Reading Tommy Wrong run poorly after Firefox was okay but not brilliant. I just think a lot of horses out of that race have run poorly. So maybe next season once summer on his back, maybe a little Atlantic at twenty five to one. Now these are not bets, like I say, these are just horses that I've thought about for these types of races. There is one in the Browns that I really do like. I'll talk about him later. Um 
I think if uh, Ballyburn goes over fences, he'd probably go to Turner's. And although there'll be a lot of Turner's horses out of that pipe and um, out of other races this season, I I do feel that if Ballyburn goes over fences, he could scare a lot of horses into the Arkle or the Browns by being in the Turner's. I would imagine that's where he'll go if he goes over fences. So it's why I haven't really looked or had a bet in the Arkle or the Turners as yet. In the open races, it's really tough. Uh, Constitution Hill didn't have an injury, so I would see him coming back as a you know, potent threat in the champion hurdle. And I would think that of, of the horses coming through, I would think a fully fit Constitution Hill, only Ballyburn would, you know, make a race of it. Perhaps Ballyburn could be could beat him, I don't know. I wouldn't see Stateman beating him at all. Uh, I think Lossy Mouth would duck the challenge if it was a fully fit Constitution Hill and take the easy option in the Mayor's Hurdle. The Mayor's Hurdle, there is value in that market, but the worry is Lossy Mouth staying in the division. And, and I do see that as where she will stay because Willie Mullins isn't really up for the challenge of if he thinks he's got an easy option he's taking the easy option and the easy option for Lossie Mouth will be the Mayor's Hurdle over a run against Constitution Hill or Ballyburn or even Stateman and that's where I would think she would go. The horse I did think was real value in this market but only if Lossie Mouth didn't run would be Jade de Grouchy who should improve from five to six but I'm not sure there's any mares that would beat Lossy Mouth over two and a half miles. She'll improve again for being a six-year-old. She's won this year's mares hurdle pulling a cart. And I, I, as much as I'd like Jade de Grugy, if Lossy Mouth wasn't in this market, and the 20 to 1 is big price, I, I can't recommend backing her because I just feel that Rich Ritchie and Willie Mullins will go for the easy option. And you're looking for a lot of horses to come out like Constitution Hill and Ballyburn not to be there to think that Lossy Mouth would go to the champion hurdle. So although Jade de Grugy is a big price at 20 to 1, I couldn't recommend a bet because of Lossy Mouth probably going for a turn victory. The open races on the Wednesday are quite difficult as well with the champion chase. You, you have to factor in an ergamine could come back, although I don't like horses coming back from an injury. El Fabiolo is still a very good champion. John Bond didn't run in this division. And Gaelic Warrior sort of makes me think there's no value because there's no other up and cameras. I mean, I know Declan from the understarters orders will just keep saying that Captain Guinness is the value, and perhaps he is, but... I would see Gaelic Warriors a huge threat if he came in here, but he's only 72. El Fabiolo, you know, is he really going to run such a poor race again? It's unlikely. And there's still an argument to come into the mix. So very difficult on the open races on the Wednesday. On the Thursday, seems to be a bit more value floating around in there, where if you look at this year's Ryanair, First protector, that was a gold cap horse. The third conflated was a gold cap horse. So dropping back from the gold cap isn't a bad thing. And when you look at this year's gold cap or next year's gold cap, going to be Galpin de Champ, Factor File, Corbett's Cross, Faster Slow, Jerry Colomb will go back there as well. So going to be very difficult for horses like La Home Press and Brave Man's Game. And they could represent value at 25 to 1 and 33 to 1 for the Ryanair. The worry would be that Gaelic Warrior or John Bon or even an Ergamine could come here and spoil the party a little bit. So even though you look like you've got a bit of value at 25s or 33s on those two British horses, and perhaps you could have, there's always the worry that one of them could parachute in here and ruin your value. So quite a difficult race to assess that, but those two would be the two I'd be sort of thinking around as big prices. In the stairs hurdle, now I have backed one here now, it's a, it is a Hail Mary sort of job, but I do think Fasel Vega hasn't done well over fences. Now, 
Willie seems to be obsessed with this horse a little bit. I'm not sure he would go for a stairs hurdle campaign with this horse, but if he did, all the ingredients are there for a failed chaser, just like Big Bax. He's got stamina on his side, I would think. Quivega's won over three miles. And he's got good festival form apart from this season. So he's won a bumper there and he's um, been second in the Supreme. I think he's a, a candidate to go to a stairs hurdle, especially with the amount of strength and depth they've got in the staying chases. I would hope Willie Wallens would even at least think about it. And at the price as far as El Vega is for the stairs hurdle, I have had a speculative bet on him at 25. And he's available at 33s as well. I couldn't get that, but I, I do think he's a possibility for the stairs hurdle. If they did take this route, he would not be double figures before he even runs over hurdles again. So I just think, I just think it's a possibility, and I, and I do like. Uh, I do like the price. I, I think that it's something that could happen, and I, in my mind, I could see it happening. And I think he would really give to Hooper something to think about. The Friday is very difficult. You do see Gallop and Deschamps going for a third gold cap. Factor File is going to be a massive opponent for him. Both of them are sort of priced accordingly. I think I would sort of think Monty Star and Corbett's Cross possibly represent the value in the gold cap market. Both of them, 14 to 1 and 20 to 1. You know, they're good shouts. They're up and cameras. They've, I mean, Monty Star jumped amazingly well in the Brown Advisory. He was beaten by Fuck to File, but on a stiffer course over two firelongs further, it could be perhaps Monty Starr's bag more than Fuck to File. Whether he can beat Gulp in the Champs, that's debatable. Very, very debatable. But I think he'd have a chance. Corbett's Cross, like I say, El Emmett Mallins is capable of anything. He's won the National Hunt Chase in a hot canter, really. You couldn't rule him out. You really could not rule Corbett's cross out. He, he'd he be the value, although the worry would be his jumping in a faster run race. That would be a worry. It wouldn't be a worry for Monty Starr. He jumps beautifully, but I think Corbett's cross on the other hand could be a bit of a dodgy character over three mile two in a fast run race. You just, you just don't know. So, yeah, Monty Starr and Corbett's cross perhaps for the gold cap as a value. You would see Limerick Lace as a very distinct possibility of having another win in a Mare's Chase. Brighter days ahead is going chasing and would have to be a big opponent, but 6-1, I'm not sure. That's great value. The one I would think if she came out the Mare's Hurdle and came chasing and Henry got her jumping would be Laundry Lady at 25-1. to one. I could entertain thoughts of having a bet on her, but the last one that tried this was tell me something, girl, and she jumped so poorly that you'd need to see her debut over fences before you'd be thinking about Launchy Lady. But she is the one that I've thought about as a possible for the Mayor's Chase. Now for the one that I think no one will agree with me on, but I've had a few quid on, more than a few quid actually, because I think the price is just nonsense really. I think in the Brown Advisory, Shauna Bob is way, way overpriced at 50-1. to 1. I know he hasn't run at the festival this year due to the form in Nicky's yard, but I think the form of his two hurdles wins this season are fairly reasonable. Watching the Albert Bartlett, yes, the jukebox man will be a, a danger, as will a lot of the horses out the pipe who all look like three-mile chasers for next season, Waterford Whispers and Key de Bourbon better days ahead but I I really do like Shauna Bob and I think at 50 to 1 he's absolutely huge I cannot believe the price of this horse in truth and I have to have him on side now like I talked about with Smoking Cheltenham he's got a few on side in this race at 50, 33s and 25s whereas I am a bit different in my videos I would only really go for one Um in a race and uh, I do think that Shauna Bob has to be my selection and my bet here so 
I just feel he's massively, massively overpriced at 50 to 1, where I would put him in probably at the betting at 16 to 1. And if he jumped well and won a couple of novice chases in Britain, he could be, you know, he could be 8 to 1. So the 50s for me has to be the value. So if you've got a spare fiver, you wouldn't be too far off the mark with 250 each way on him or a fiver to win. I just think he's not a 50 to 1 shot now. I'm not saying empty the piggy bank or, you know, go to the bank for a loan to back Shanna Bob. And he's certainly not a bet from my videos. He's just a speculative bet who I think might turn out to be a lot better than a 50 to 1 shot. And who knows? Who knows? But he'd be my idea of the one who's my value pick. I would think he'd definitely go to the Brown Advisory if he's good enough. Now, he may not be good enough. I think he is. I think this will be the race he would go to. So fifty to one, he'd be, he'd be one I'd put up, and I think the other one I'd put up. I think there's thirty threes around for Fasel Vega, for the stairs hurdle, uh, and if he went there, he'd be another one who I'd think would be a half decent bet. Like I say, I think with me being not putting on the post bets off and tending to wait till the festival, I do recommend that you go to Steve's channel if you want to have more bets because he puts up quite a lot more bets and like uh, you've seen this season, he's had a very successful first season. But like I keep saying to everybody, you cannot guarantee success and I was so lucky at Cheltenham this season, putting up a 13-2 to two winner who was going to hate the ground and drifted to 12 to 1 and that was the horse who saved me and I like I said in the bet review I could have done so much better and I could have made the profit out of Limerick Lace and Callop and Deschamps double if I'd got it up in time I could have barked I know the way you're thinking but the price kept shrinking on me as I was trying to put the bet up but Auntie Post is tough but on the day it's becoming extremely tough as well but you know, we've done well at Cheltenham, like, it's not easy and I can't guarantee that by recommending you go and follow Steve that he's going to do so well next season because it may be that he has a poor season. It may be I have a poor season. Lots of the tipsters will have had a poor season this year and, and you feel bad for them because they probably had an outstanding season last season like Ginger Joe did where he... He couldn't back a loser last season, and this season he's had a poorer season, and that's because Cheltenham is extremely difficult. Anyway, I'll leave you with my two sort of Hail Marys for next season at Cheltenham 2025 as Shana Bob for the Brown Advisory at 50 to 1, and Fasel Vega at 33 to 1 for the Stairs Hurdle. Thanks for watching the video today. I hope you're having a good time since Cheltenham, enjoying your winnings and uh, I'll be back to you as we start to get more races priced up for entry. Thanks for watching and bye for now.